I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net in New York, and we have Greg Womack, President of Womack Investment Advisors, joining us from Edmond, Oklahoma. Hey, Greg, good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. How's your uh, Monday going? Monday's been a little bit of a problem for me right now because it's it's the uh, uh, allergy is starting to happen now uh, for okay, me. Yeah. And, uh, most of the people here in New York too. Uh, how's the house? I, I thought that was just a, an Oklahoma or Southwest. <laughs> I guess not. No, we over. got major pollen counts now in New York. Uh, they say like yeah. the pollen count is about ten ten something for today. Wow. Well, that's nothing to sneeze at for sure. <laughs> And Greg, what what do you have for us today? Well, you know, last week was a pretty exciting week in the markets. We, we had a higher than expected job creation report, but that couldn't entirely rescue the domestic equities from the slump they had, you know, earlier in the week. And also, the one year anniversary of last year's May six flash crash, the Dow was up roughly twenty percent from that May six two thousand ten close. Commodities uh, weren't so lucky last week, you know, leading to hope uh, for relief at the pump. Spot oil prices fell 100, below $100 a barrel. Gold fell back under 1500 an ounce. And just over a week after hitting almost $50 an ounce, the spot price of silver dropped more than 20% when the CME group repeatedly raised silver margin requirements to try to curb the speculation. So investors sought reassurance in the arms of Treasury bonds, and the 10-year uh, yield dropped as, as prices rose. Currently, the 10-year yield is roughly about 3.2%. Uh, prior week was 3.32. So um, r uh, lower yields mean rise higher prices for Treasuries. And really, you know, year to date, uh, the Dow's up about 9.2, S&P up about 6.6. And uh, Russell 2000 about 6.4 percent. Now, as I speak right now, John, um, you know the markets are up about uh, half a percent in general uh, when it comes to the uh, as far as 12 o'clock Eastern time on uh, May 9th. So, you know, really last week the headlines were, you know, even though businesses added jobs, 244,000 in April. This was the largest number in almost a year. The unemployment rate nudged upward from 8.8 to 9 percent. So that's the first increase uh, in the unemployment rate since November. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics said jobs increased across a broad spectrum of industries while government jobs declined and construction remained static. We did see some uh, U.S. manufacturing growth in April as the Institute for Supply Management reported a reading of 60.4. So that was the 21st straight month of growth. It was slightly lower than the previous months of 61.2 percent. Construction spending in March fell 6.7 from the same month last year and was down 7.8 percent during the first quarter from uh, first quarter of 2010. However, the Commerce Department says construction spending did improve compared to February and the most of the 1.4 percent monthly increase was private construction. Business productivity uh, rose at an annual rate of 1.6 during the first three months of the year compared to the quarter of first quarter of 2010. It was up 1.3 percent during that time. However, the labor force didn't see much benefit. The Commerce Department said that though the 2.6 percent increase in hourly compensation for the quarterly outpace of productivity gains, uh, higher higher consumer costs meant that adjusted for inflation compensation actually fell two and a half percent. Well, this week, John, really, uh, I think investors are going to be watching to see if the commodity sell-off continues. Um, as, we, as we have it today on May 9th, uh, gold, silver, and, and commodities in general are rebounding up some. It does, if it does, it could help, you know, um, re, you know, take care of the concerns about rising cost if Thursday's and Friday's inflation numbers are discouraging. So it really kind of inflation has been on the, on the burner, uh, front burner with the markets and the economy. And of course, higher oil costs and commodity costs are really a tax, especially to the middle class. We also have retail sales. Uh, we'll provide a good snapshot of the state of the consumer's wallets. 
So this week the key releases are the import-export prices on Tuesday, international trade on Wednesday. We have wholesale inflation and retail sales and business inventories on the, uh, Thursday, and then consumer inflation on Friday. That's Greg Womack, President of Womack Investment Advisors, joining us from Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net in New York.